हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू दीक्षा कर्नाटका यूट्यूब चैनल एंड यू आर वाचिंग के सी ई टी सिक्सटी आउट ऑफ सिक्सटी इन फिजिक्स सीरीज वेयर वी आर डिस्कसिंग ईच एंड एवरी चैप्टर टॉपिक वाइज आल्सो वी आर सॉल्विंग ऑल प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम दैट चैप्टर सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड वेव ऑफ टिक्स चैप्टर इफ यू हैव मिस दैट चैप्टर यू कैन विजिट आवर यूट्यूब चैनल एंड सी द प्ले लिस्ट वेयर ऑल द चैप्टर्स ऑल द कंप्लीटेड चैप्टर्स इंक्लूडिंग the uh, kpl series and the pyqs are there so before we start you have to do one thing you have to join our whatsapp group so that you don't miss out on a single update everything is available on our whatsapp group so don't forget to join our whatsapp channel now let us start with to this topic that is we are going to solve wave optics pyqs so let us look into the first question when light propagates through a given homogeneous medium the velocities of primary wavefronts are lesser than those of secondary wavelets primary wavefronts are greater than or equal to those of the secondary wavelets primary wavefront and wavelets are equal primary wavefront are larger than those of secondary wavefront so basically we have studied that we have discussed that that secondary wavelets move with the same speed as the primary wavefront so from there we can simply write option c is the correct answer right now let's move on an unpolarized light of intensity i is passed through two polaroids kept one after another with the planes parallel to each other the intensity of light emerging from the second polaroid is uh, 1 by 4 the angle between the pass axis of the two polaroids is so very very important question from this chapter this question this type of question comes every year almost every alternate year this kind of question is coming so let's look into how we can solve this question quickly so we have two polaroids okay suppose this pass axis is like this and another polaroid whose pass axis is like this and the angle between them is theta okay the light of intensity i is entering here so we know that this is an unpolarized light so from uh, for unpolarized light the intensity after passing through the first polaroid will be i by 2 we already know that now what will be the intensity of this suppose this intensity is i dash then from malleus law we know that i dash is the previous intensity times cos square theta right this is malleus law and this is given as 1/4 uh, of the uh, uh, initial intensity so it will be 1/4 of i right from here we can find the value of cos theta so cos square theta is 1 by 4 divided by 1 by 2 that is 1 by 2 right so 1 by 4 is on uh, on our right hand side on our left hand side it is i by 2 so we what we have to do we have to uh, cancel the i i is will be cancelled so 1 by 4 divided by 1 by 2 so cancelling them we can get 1 by 2 so cos theta is basically square root of everything that is 1 by root 2 right so cos theta you have calculated so theta should be equals to 60 degrees right uh, sorry theta should be 45 degrees 60 is root 3 by 2 right no sorry 60 is half cos 60 half but it should be 45 degrees that is 1 by root 2 so correct answer is option d right now let's move on three polaroid sheets are again this is another year similar question okay three polaroid sheets are coaxially placed indicated in the diagram pass axis of the polaroids 2 and 3 make 30 degrees and 90 degrees with the pass axis of the polaroid sheet 1 if i not is the intensity of the incident unpolarized light then entering sheet 1 the intensity of the emergent light through sheet 3 is so very very interesting question so first light is entering uh, through this polaroid with the intensity i not then this intensity will be Uh, i not by 2 right and uh, this will be i not by 2 cos 30 degree cos square 30 degrees and uh, this angle and this angle will be the angle between these two polaroids will be 90 minus 30 that is 60 degrees right so it will be whatever is coming out here cos square 60 of that will be the final answer now let's 
uh, look into the final answer. So, I naught by 2 cos square 30 degree. Cos 30 degree is root 3 by 2, right? So, root 3 by 2 whole square is 3 by 2, right? And then cos square 60 degrees. So, we have to multiply this cos square terms. Cos square 60, cos 60 means uh, root 3 by uh, 2, right? So, it will be root 3 by 4, sorry. And cos square 60 degrees. Cos 60 is uh, half. So, cos square 60 will be 1 by 4. Okay. So, now multiply all of them. 3 I naught divided by 2 times 8. 8 4 is a 32. So, 3 I naught by 32. So, correct answer is option B. Don't make any mistakes here while putting the values of cos and sine uh, cos 60 and cos uh, 30. So, as long as you are doing it correctly, you will get full marks. So, this is a very, very important type question which is coming every alternate year. In case of Fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit, the diffraction pattern on the screen is correct for which of the following statements. Now, Fraunhofer diffraction or single slit diffraction that is there in our syllabus. Okay. Uh, central dark band having uniform uh, brightness on either side which is wrong. Central uh, dark bands, uh, there is no central dark band so you don't need to read it. Central bright band is only there. Central bright band having dark bands on either sides. Yes, it is correct. Uh, central Bright band having alternate dark and bright bands of decreasing intensity on either side. So, this is more correct even though it is saying that dark bands on the both sides but after what that is not mentioned. Immediately after yes there is a dark band but here the statement is complete that it mentioned that alternate dark and bright bands okay with decreasing intensity. So, as we have seen that in case of diffraction the intensity is decreasing right as we go from left to right this is the maximum intensity at the center this is the first bright band okay this is the secondary maxima another bright, bright, dark band then another maxima but these maxima and these maxima are much lesser than this and this this is also lesser than that so the intensity decreases gradually right so correct answer is option b now question number five when a compact disc is illuminated by small source of white light, colored bands are observed. This is due to, this is due to diffraction. Okay, Inter, for interference, we need slits, right? Diffraction can happen from reflection as well and because the disc has very sharp edges, okay, the light actually bends around the sharp edges. So, this is why we see the color uh, in a disc. Now, I know, don't know if you have seen a disc. But for uh, when I was a student, the disc was very popular and everyone has been having a disc. They used to show the to your friends, uh, playing games, uh, watching movies, etc. Right. So nowadays, uh, tell me in the comment below, what do you use to transfer data? Is it only pen drive or whatever else? Right. Now, for light diverging from a finite point source, the wavefront is parabolic. The wavefront is cylindrical, no finite or infinite. If it is a um, point source, then the uh, wavefront should be uh, spherical as usual. The intensity at the wavefront does not depend on the distance. Intensity does change with distance. We have discussed that. The intensity decreases in proportion to the distance squared. Yes, intensity decreases with the distance squared. That is, it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Right. So, this is the uh, statement, correct statement. Question number 7. A slit of width A is illuminated by red light of wavelength 6500 angstrom. If the first diffraction minima falls at 30 degrees, then the value of A is. Now, there is a formula A sin theta equals to n lambda for first uh, for uh, dark fringes. Okay. For first dark fringe, n equals to 1 obviously. So, we can write a sin theta equals to lambda. Now, in your book, they have assumed the theta value of theta is small. So, they have approximated a theta is equal to uh, n lambda and theta equals to n lambda by a. Okay, but this is not the correct formula. Correct formula is a sin theta. So, if the value of theta is small, you can approximate that to be a theta. Now, <coughs> What is A sin theta? Sin 30 degree is given. 30 degree is nothing. Sin 30 is half. Okay. So, equals to lambda. 
and what is the value of lambda? Lambda's value is 6500 angstrom. 6500 angstrom means 6500 times 10 to the power of minus 10 meters, right? So, A, they have asked you to find the value of A, okay? So, A will be 6500, this 2 will go up times 2 times 10 to the power of minus 10, okay? Now, 65 times 2, 65 times 2 is 130. So, 130, then there are two zeros times 10 to the power of minus 10, okay? So, if you take 1, 2, 3, 0 and then one dot here, one decimal here, then you can reduce up to four zeros. That is, it will become 1.3 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meters. Now, 1.3 10 to the power of minus 6 meters can be written as 1.3 micrometers or 1.3 microns, okay? Microns is nothing but micrometer, okay? This is a fancy name for uh, micrometer. So, correct answer is 1.3 micron. So, which of the following statements are correct with the reference to single slit diffraction pattern? Number one, fringes are of unequal width. Yes, For, as we have seen that uh, we see central bright, then small, small uh, minimas and maxima. So, uh, widths are not uh, uniform, so width are unequal. Okay, fringes are of equal width, no. Light energy is conserved, yes, light is a form of energy, it will always be conserved. Okay, so no doubt about that. Intensity of all bright fringes are equal, no, as we have seen that, intensity is maximum at the center and it is gradually decreasing, so this is not correct. So, correct statement is 1 and 3, 1 and 3 is option A, so option A is the correct answer. Now, in the Young's double slit experiment, a monochromatic source of wavelength lambda is used. The intensity of the light passing through each slit is I naught. The intensity of the light reaching at the screen SC at a point P at a distance X from O is given by. So, first of all, they have given you intensity of each of the light coming from this is I naught this is also I naught, okay, what will be the intensity here? Now, for that, we will be using one formula that intensity is 4 I naught cos square phi by 2. Here, phi is the phase difference, okay. Now, to calculate phase difference, first of all, what we have to do? We have to calculate phase difference is equ equals to 2 pi by lambda times path difference, okay. Now, this part of questions used to be very common in the previous uh, years because there was you are directly calculating the path difference to find the fringe width, but those are not there. So, we have to uh, understand this formula path difference, how we can calculate the path difference so that you do not struggle to solve this kind of questions even though this uh, is not, uh, everything is not part of the syllabus, but this is uh, part of the syllabus, so might be coming in the upcoming exam. So, first of all, this is the distance given, this distance is given D. Okay, and you are trying to find here, this distance is x, right? Now, how can we calculate the path difference? Suppose this is the slit 1, this is slit 2, this distance is d by 2, this distance is d by 2. Okay, now, how can you find the uh, path difference, path difference delta is given by x d by d. Path difference is given by x d by d. So, what we can do? We can calculate this by using this formula. So, let us apply this formula here. So, it will be 2 pi x d by lambda d, okay. So, what is the phi, uh, phi by 2 then? Pi x d by lambda d. So, intensity will be I naught 
कॉस स्क्वायर पाई एक्स डी बाई लैमडा डी ओके सो दिस इज द करेक्ट आंसर लेट्स चेक द ऑप्शन पाई एक्स डी बाई पाई एक्स डी बाई लैमडा डी सो दिस इज द करेक्ट आंसर ऑप्शन बी इज द करेक्ट आंसर राइट दिस इज कॉमन ओके फोर आई स्क्वायर कॉस स्क्वायर थीटा ओके एंड ओनली थिंग यू हैव टू चेक वेर आर द थीटा पार्ट इज फाइव बाई टू इज पार्ट इज रिटर्न करेक्टली और नॉट सो पाई डी एक्स पाई लैमडा डी ओके so only if you see only two options is possibly correct one is with by two lambda d one is with only this so we have already calculated which one is correct because there was two pi by lambda so one two cancelled so this is the correct answer okay now three polaroid sheets p1 p2 and p3 are kept parallel to each other such that the angle between pass axis of p1 and p2 is 45 degree and that between p2 and p3 is 45 degree if unpolarized beam of light intensity 128 uh, omega per uh, watt per meter square is incident on p1 what is the incident of light coming out of p3 same question okay same question only thing is the values are different okay and instead here they have given uh, real value instead of giving it to i now we know that whatever intensity is coming say i is coming from here then it will be i by 2 then it will be i by 2 cos square 45 degrees and again whatever is coming from here it will be cos square 45 degrees again multiplied here right so let us uh, solve it quickly so what is the intensity of light i is equal to 128 we will use that value at the last line okay before that we will just solve it without using uh, this value so first i uh, by 2 cos square 45 degree cos square 45 degree means what cos 45 is 1 by root 2 okay so 1 by root 2 whole square times this is for this one right and times there will be one more cos square 45 degree so one more cos square 45 degree that means 1 by root 2 whole square so this is the final intensity so i by 2 times 1 by 2 times 1 by 2 so 2 to the 4 4 to the 8 so i by 8 so correct uh, answer will be 128 divided by 8 right so 8 1 8 48 Six, so sixteen watt per meter square. So correct answer is option A. Okay, so you have to calculate it quietly. Now, Young's double slit experiment using monochromatic light of wavelength lambda, the intensity of the light at a point on the screen where the path difference is lambda is k units. The intensity of the light at a point where path difference is lambda by three. So we have already solved this question that if uh, intensity we know that intensity is given by four i naught cos square phi by two. Now what is phi? Phi is two pi by lambda times uh, path difference. Now for first time path difference is given as lambda. Okay, so two pi by lambda, lambda lambda cancels. It will be two pi, right? So that intensity is given as k. So let us put this value. So k equals to four i naught. Okay, cos square two pi by two, right? So four i naught cos pi cos square pi cos pi is minus one cos square. Uh, pi is minus one whole square, so that will be plus one. So it will be four i naught. Okay. Now they have asked you what will be the uh, intensity when the path difference is lambda by three. So when the path difference is lambda by three, then the phase difference will be two pi by lambda times lambda by three. Lambda lambda cancels, so it will be two pi by three. So now, if you are confused, what is two pi by three? You can use the value two pi. Uh, two pi is uh, 
pi is 180 degree, 2 pi is 360 degrees, right? So 360 degree by uh, 3 that is 120 degrees, okay? Now what you have to do, you have to find the uh, current intensity. Current intensity will be I equals to 4 I naught times cos square of 120 degrees divided by 2 that is cos 60 degree cos square 60 degree 4 i naught now 4 i naught is k it is given 4 i naught is k we have already calculated 4 i naught equals to k so we don't need to write uh, 4 i naught anymore we will simply write this as k right so cos square 60 degrees cos 60 is uh, half so half whole square so it will be k by 4 so this is the final intensity k by 4 is the answer so correct answer is option d right now a plane wave front of wavelength lambda is incident on a single slit of width a the angular width of the principal maximum this is a very interesting question okay uh, even though not so difficult question but not very easy question so we have seen that in our intensity diagram this is the central width and suppose there is a, uh, uh, a diffraction slit of width A then this is the width of the central fringe. This is the width of the central fringe from minimum to minimum. Okay. Now if you remember the formula I gave you it was A sin theta is equal to N lambda for uh, the minimum. Right, this is the condition for minimum in uh, diffraction, right. So, what we have to do, this is plus 1, this will be minus 1, n equals to, okay. So, this is the plus 1 value for n, this is minus 1 value for n and if you calculate the corresponding values, then you can find the uh, width, right, sin theta, okay. So, if you can find the corresponding thetas, what you have to do, you have to calculate uh, basically and also you remember that this is basically symmetrical. So, if you calculate one of the thetas, okay, one of the thetas, then you just need to find two theta, okay, plus one, minus one, one case you will get plus, one case you will get minus and uh, on, on, only thing that you have to know when you are finding difference, it will be getting added. So, that will be the answer, right. So, what you have to do first, you have to find theta. So, theta is nothing but sine inverse of n lambda by a okay also one more uh, approximation approximation that we can do is that assuming that the value of theta is small we can even ignore the theta as well okay so we can ignore the theta as well we can say that so a sin theta equals to lambda only okay a sin theta equals to lambda only why lambda because n is plus 1 so what we will do we will because lambda is very small okay so we can assume that sin theta equals to lambda by a now lambda is wavelength of light so wavelength of light means it is very small and you are dividing it with another uh, smaller value but still you can say this value is very small so approximately this will be giving you lambda by a okay approximately sin theta for small value of theta sin theta becomes theta right cos theta becomes 1 tan theta becomes theta right so theta is uh, lambda by a now if theta is lambda by a then what is the value of this is theta this is theta so total angular width is 2 theta so angular width is 2 theta so 2 theta is basically 2 lambda by a so this is the angular width of a central maximum so angular width of the central maximum is 2 lambda by a now, if you remember it from now on, if you remember it, you can answer it in less than one second. If you do not remember it, you have to calculate it using this method, right. Now, in a Fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit, if yellow light illuminating the slit is replaced by blue light, then the diffraction bands. Now, we know that theta is basically n lambda by e, okay. So, this is basically half width. So, what is happening if you are uh, changing the uh, yellow light to blue light? Yellow light has higher wavelength compared to blue light. We know that VIPGR, if you for forget the formula, VIPGR is the thing to remember. 
वी आई बी जी वाई ओ आर सो आर हैज हाइएस्ट वेव लेंथ राइट एंड वायलेट हैज लोएस्ट वेव लेंथ इंडिगो एंड ब्लू आर क्लोज टू इच अदर ओके दिस इज ऑल इन विजिबल रेंज नाउ इन विजिबल रेंज ऑब्वियसली ब्लू हैज लोअर वेव लेंथ कंपेयर टू येलो राइट सो वेब लेंथ इज डिक्रीजिंग वेब लेंथ डिक्रीजिंग मीन्स द स्लिट्स विल बिकम नैरोअर इट विल बिकम नैरोअर बिकॉज दिस विट विल बिकम स्मॉलर राइट लैमडा इज डिक्रीजिंग डिक्रीजिंग मीन्स इट इज इट विल बिकम स्मॉलर नाउ इन यंग्स डबल स्लिट एक्सपेरिमेंट टू वेब लेंथ लैमडा वन इक्वल्स टू सेवन एट्टी नैनोमीटर एंड लैमडा टू इक्वल्स टू फाइव ट्वेंटी नैनोमीटर्स आर यूज टू ऑप्टेन इंटरफेरेंस फ्रिंजेस इफ द एन एथ ब्राइट बैंड और ड्यू टू लैमडा वन को इनसाइड्स विद एन प्लस वन ब्राइट बैंड ऑफ लैमडा टू देन द वैल्यू ऑफ एन इज सो वी नो दैट द लोकेशन ऑफ एन एथ ब्राइट बैंड इज गिवेन बाई n lambda right n lambda should be the condition for path difference for condition for uh, path difference for uh, uh, maximum right so for maximum what is say uh, for example say uh, for li uh, li wavelength 1 it is lambda 1 for wavelength 2 it is n plus 1 lambda 2 now it is said that they are coinciding with each other coinciding means x1 should be equals to x2 so n lambda 1 should be equals to n plus 1 lambda 2 so what you have to do we have to find the value of n lambda 1 is given 780 n plus 1 lambda 2 is given 520 Now remember that both sides are nanometers, so nanometers, nanometers will cancel. So we are not writing 10 to the power of minus 9 here. We just simply cancel them. Uh, 39. It will be 26. 2. 3. Okay. 3 13s are 39. 2 13s are 26. So 3n equals to 2n plus 2. Okay, so from here we can write three n minus two n equals to two or n equals to two. N equals to two is the correct answer. This is very simple question. Okay, without very difficult mathematics, only formula that you have to remember is condition for uh, maxima in interference. Now, I uh, personally suggest you have to remember the condition for. Uh, Uh, maxima in interference and condition for minima in, in uh, diffraction okay both are very similar okay uh, with a slight diffraction uh, slight changes in this case path difference is given in uh, diffraction angular displacement angular uh, difference is given angular width is given so <coughs> both cases are very important in young's double slit experiment the slits are separated by 2 mm and the screen is placed at a distance of 1.2 uh, meter from the slits light consisting of uh, two wavelengths 6500 angstrom and 5200 angstroms are used to obtain interference fringes then the separation uh, between the fourth bright fringe and uh, fourth bright fringes of two different patterns produced by the two wavelengths now this is a out of syllabus question for that you have to calculate the beta that is fringe width which is no longer part of the syllabus so first you have to calculate the beta for uh, first wave, uh, uh, wavelength and then you have to calculate 4 beta 1 for the second one you have to calculate the 4 uh, beta 2 and then you have to find the difference between them now unfortunately this is not part of your syllabus so i am not going to discuss this in this lecture but if you know the formula beta is equal to lambda d by d then you can calculate that using the formula and then you can mention the comment in the uh, comment section below now in system of two crossed polarizers again again this is most common question in uh, this chapter in a system of two crossed polarizers it is found that the intensity of light from the second polarizer is half from that of the first polarizer now this is a easier version of the question so there are one polarizer there is another polarizer okay and they have said that this intensity is suppose i 
then the uh, outgoing intensity is half of the uh, first polarizer. So, it is i by 2. So, if this angle is theta, then i cos square theta equals to i by 2, right. They have mentioned is intensity light from the second polarizer is half, right. So, half means i by 2. So, i, i cancels. So, cos square theta is half. So, cos theta is 1 by root 2. 1 by root 2 means cos 45 degrees. So, just only thing that you have to remember about the square. So, when you are removing the square, you have to adjust it accordingly, right. So, theta is equal to 45 degrees, okay, 45 degrees. This question is coming again and again and again and again each and every year, almost every year, okay. According to Huygens principle, during the refraction of light from air to denser medium. Now, from when light uh, starts from uh, air to a denser medium, okay, what all happens? It is not according to, uh, not only according to the Huygens principle, this is very common, right. Uh, what is the thing that we know? That when light enters into a uh, denser medium, whatever medium, whenever light changes the medium, first of all, frequency remains constant. Frequency does not change, okay. Now, light in air is always the fastest in air or in vacuum. So, whenever it is entered into a den uh, denser medium, okay, obviously its speed will decrease, okay. So, speed decreases. Now, so what all are given? Speed decreases, wavelength increases, okay. So, only option C and D we will consider because in those two cases they have said speed uh, increases, right. So, speed cannot increase. Speed in air is al almost a constant quantity and it is the highest vol value. So, A and B will not consider, only C A and D we will consider. So, speed and uh, uh, wavelength both are decreasing. Here they are saying wavelength is increases, but speed decreases. Now, when light enters into a denser medium, it has a difficulty to move into that medium. That's why speed decreases. Now, if speed decreases, wavelength has to, has to decrease. Okay. So, otherwise you can remember that speed of light in a medium is equal to uh, nu lambda. Okay, so nu is a constant for a light. Okay, speed is decreasing. We have already anal analyzed that. So to compensate that, lambda has to decrease. So that if speed is decreasing, lambda has to decrease to compensate that. This is the formula you have learned in web uh, web chapter in first year, right? Now, in Young's double slit experiment, the source is white light. One slit is covered with red filter and the other uh, with blue filter. There will be so, what we are doing, we are using one uh, slit with red light, another slit with blue light, right. That is, that will not produce any interference because to produce interference, we have to use monochromatic light, okay. So, light from blue and yellow will not interfere with each other. So, to do that, but yeah, two very close yellow may be interfering. So, for example, I am giving one example that is a called sodium D lights, sodium D1 and D2, both are sodium uh, lights only. They have a two uh, angstrom difference in their wavelength, okay. One is uh, two angstrom more than the other. So, they will produce some uh, significant interference, but uh, when you are using yellow and uh, blue, they have a very high difference in wavelength, they will not interfere, okay. So, they will not interfere, so we will not get any interference in this case, okay, neither pink. So, if you are thinking alternate dark and pink fringes, very wrong. Light of wavelength 600 nanometer is incident normally on a slit of width 0.2 millimeter. The angular width of the central maxima in the diffraction pattern is. So, if you remember, we have calculated the uh, uh, pattern central width, right? This angle we consider theta, right? So, if this was the slit, we have calculated this angle is theta, then total displacement is 2 theta. So, we also said that theta is n lambda by a. Now, for first, I mean this is first minima, first minima n is 1. So, theta is lambda by a and uh, the width is 2 theta that is 2 lambda by a, right. So, 2 lambda by a, they have asked you to find the 2 lambda by a, okay. The wavelength is given 600 nanometer and width is given 0.2 millimeter. So, 2 times 600 nanometer and 0 
टू मिलीमीटर मिलीमीटर मीन्स टेन टू दि पावर ऑफ माइनस थ्री ओके सो वाट वी विल डू लेट मी मेक दिस टू टू टाइम्स सिक्स हंड्रेड ओके टाइम्स टेन टू दि पावर ऑफ माइनस नाइन डिवाइडेड बाई टू टाइम्स टेन टू दि पावर ऑफ माइनस फोर ओके आई हैव रिमूव दिस डेसिमल सो दैट आई कैन कैंसल दैम ओके सो इट विल बिकम सिक्स हंड्रेड टाइम्स टेन टू दि पावर ऑफ वाट माइनस नाइन दिस विल गो अप एंड इट विल बिकम प्लस प्लस फोर सो माइनस फाइव सो सिक्स हंड्रेड प्लस फाइव माइनस फाइव और सिक्स टाइम्स टेन टू दि पावर ऑफ माइनस थ्री सिक्स टाइम्स टेन टू दि पावर ऑफ माइनस थ्री रेडियंस ओके वेन यू आर डूइंग दिस कैलकुलेशन वेन यू आर डूइंग दिस अप्रॉक्सीमेशन वैल्यूज द एंगल शुड बी मेजर्ड इन रेडियन नॉट इन डिग्री ओके बी केयरफुल अबाउट दैट सो वन मोर थिंग इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग साइन थीटा इक्वल्स टू थीटा दिस इज वैलिड ओनली वेन इट इज टू फॉर ओनली वेन थीटा इज एक्सप्रेस इन रेडियंस इट इज नॉट वैलिड वेन थीटा इज एक्सप्रेस इन डिग्रीज ओके बी केयरफुल to observe diffraction the size of the obstacle so to observe diffraction or to observe interference one thing you have to remember that the size of the obstacle should be of the order of the wavelength okay should be of the order of the wavelength so if it is diffraction it should be the obstacle if it is interference it should be the slit width slit width should be of the order of the uh, wavelength so that means what so if the slit is very thin Uh, wavelength you are using suppose 600 nanometers and the width is uh, 500 meters it will you will not observe the diffraction even if it is 1 meter you will not observe okay to observe if you are using 500 nanometers uh, wavelength and to observe diffraction the width should be maybe 100 nanometer or uh, say uh, sorry not 100 maybe uh, 1000 nanometers okay 1000 nanometers means 1 micrometer right or maybe uh, it can go up to 10 micrometer or 20 micrometer okay so in that range you can still observe right you have to remember that it should be on the order of the wavelength a polarized light of again again same question a polarized light of intensity i not is passed through another polarizer whose pass axis makes an angle 60 degree with the pass axis of the former okay so the polarized light itself the intensity is given i not and the angle is given 60 degree so what is the intensity of the emergent polarized light so this is a very old question so that's why the this is a very straight forward question uh, cos square 60 degrees okay so cos square 60 degrees i not cos 60 is half so half whole square so i not by 4 so i not by 4 is the answer okay so we have reached the end of this lecture today so we have solved so many questions from the chapter wave optics also we have seen that one type of question is coming almost every alternate year so if you think that this is important and this is helping you don't forget to share it with your friends and like and subscribe to our video thank you for watching